Hello everybody! This video is kind of an add-on to the conversation that I started in my two previous videos. Uh, you don't really have to watch them in order, but if you want to, you can find the links to those in the description. They will also be on the end screen. I have a lot of material to cover in this video, so let's jump right into it. Here's a clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson talking on CNN. And I'm not sure exactly uh, when this was broadcast, but it was uploaded to YouTube just a couple days ago. Uh, not to CNN's channel, but to another channel. So I suspect this was broadcast fairly recently, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, here it is. You are our science explainer in chief, and so explain what you see on that video. Well, so p people I think have conflated the concept of a UFO with whether we're visited by aliens. UFO means unidentified, flying, Ob object, <laughs> okay? This is a highly non-specific term. Okay, in principle, I agree with what he's saying, but you know what, I, I, I'm just gonna keep rolling. Yeah. It is so non-specific, it admits you don't know what you're looking at. But what's driving that thing? It's not a space alien. It's unidentified. <laughs> okay. So, so, so... That's not good enough. Well, so, so the universe brims with mysteries. And so, <laughs> just because you don't know what it is you're looking at, doesn't mean it's intelligent aliens visiting from another planet. So, to answer the question, what's piloting it? He says, well, oh, it's unidentified. Okay, that's true, but that is such a cop-out answer. I'm sorry, you're a scientist. You are supposed to look into this thing instead of just brushing it off like you're doing so casually. Why is it that it seems that so many highly educated people are so incredibly close-minded? Don't you think it should be the exact opposite? I know for me, learning things has made me more open-minded. So what gives, Neil? Okay, look, I get it. The government hasn't admitted aliens exist. Fine. But good grief, it seems that you are just discounting that as a possibility without offering any other possible viable explanation for it. And that is a cop-out. Yes. You just said you don't know what you're looking at. So it's not, you cannot, as a next sentence, say, therefore it must be anything. Yes, but you know what we're looking at. You stare at the cosmos for a living. I'm not authorized to go beyond this part. <laughs> no, wow, you're in. <laughs> no, I'm, so we're in serious. So no, a couple of things. Just what do you see? Consider what, you what, what made people interested in this is that it involved the Pentagon and $22 million. Okay, if you honestly believe the Pentagon and the $22 million are the primary reasons people are interested in this, then that's delusional. Look, a few years back, I remember quite vividly, you wanna know what the third most frequently searched for term was on Google? UFO. Now, number one and two were adult related, and if I said them on camera, I would probably have this video demonetized, but number one is a word that rhymed with Lex. Number two is a word that rhymed with born. Uh, I'll let y'all put two, two together there. So the fact that UFO was the third most Googled term is a testament to our collective, the collective worldwide fascination with this phenomenon. I'm sorry. The fact that the Pentagon was interested in it and the $22 million, that just makes it more interesting. Incidentally, if you search for the most recent list of the most Googled terms, you will find that these three terms have been completely sanitized from the list because, well, basically we live in a society run by a bunch of f***ing snowflakes. But I digress. What, what made people interested in this is that it involved the Pentagon and $22 million, or whatever the figure was. Consider, by the way, that's $22 million over five years, and the Pentagon's budget is huge. So how much of the Pentagon budget is that? It's 0.0001% of the Pentagon budget. So, so A. B, 
it's a flying object and we don't know what it is, I would hope somebody is checking it out. <laughs> I would hope there's a program of our Defense Department to make sure they do not pose a threat. And sure enough, that's what that program was. But it just buzzed away. They didn't know what it was. It, uh, it's, of course. I, we still don't know. It's a mystery. We still don't know. Wait, hold on. And I'm, I'm cool with that. How is it that a man who calls himself a scientist can say something like, I don't know what that thing is, and I'm cool with that? Well, isn't the whole foundation of science built on not being cool with not knowing? Isn't it a striving to answer those questions? It is not apathy in saying, I don't know, and I'm cool with that. So... Shame on you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I want to briefly clarify something real quick. It is okay as a scientist to say, I don't know. But to say, I don't know, and I'm cool with that, and then go and sort of mock people who are giving a reasonable explanation as to what this phenomenon is, well, that's, that's just wrong. I am sorry. Okay, that's the end of my rant on Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, here is a clip from another man who needs no introduction, the great George Knapp. U.S. Navy officials issue a stunning statement that the Navy is developing new policies to make it easier for pilots and other military personnel to file official reports about encounters with unexplained aerial phenomenon, otherwise known as UFOs. And what's behind this dramatic announcement, and is it related to the UFO videos which were made public at the end of 2017? The I-Team's George Knapp live in studio with an exclusive update. Now, this statement by the Navy is startling. It was done in response to what the Navy says is an increasing number of intrusions of our airspace by unknown craft. It comes after 15 months of conflicting statements from the Pentagon about secret UFO research, including claims that the study, sponsored by Nevada Senator Harry Reid, wasn't really about UFOs, and that the three videos weren't really released by the Department of Defense. Suffice to say, we now know those Pentagon statements are not accurate. Okay, you got me. Can't blame a guy for trying, though. I tried to play it off. <laughs> the U.S. Navy's 2004 encounter with an object called the Tic Tac UFO. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. The 2015 incursion by multiple unknowns off the coast of Florida, dubbed Gimbal. <laughs> and a zippy craft aptly known as Go Fast. Two of these three videos were made public in December 2017, released simultaneously by the New York Times and the To The Stars Academy. The provenance of the videos has been disputed ever since. The videos were released by the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense made the decision to release them. Someone gave it a green light. Absolutely. And it wasn't me. Lou Elizondo was a career intelligence officer who for nearly a decade directed ATIP, a secret Pentagon effort that studied and analyzed UFO cases, encounters between unknown craft and military units. The program was initiated at the insistence of Nevada Senator Harry Reid. In 2017, Elizondo left the Pentagon, in part because he felt these incidents were not being given the priority they deserve. But before he left, he initiated a process to get the three Three videos and many more declassified so the public could see them. He insists these encounters are not isolated incidents. ATIP did find a lot of stuff. And this wasn't just a one off looking at the Nimitz incident. There were many, many incidents we looked at and we looked at them on a continuing basis. Pentagon spokespersons have been fuzzy about the legitimacy of the videos and critics have pounced on the ambiguity, but the I-Team has now obtained part of the paper trail. This is a DD-1910, the final step in a multi-step process issued by the Department of Defense Office of Pre-Publication and Security Review. The request specifies the three videos, Go Fast, Gimbal, and FLIR, which was the original name for Tic Tac. Some Personal information has been redacted, but the document shows authorization for release was granted on August 24, 2017. The I-Team has also acquired the DOD directive, which spells out how the release procedure works. This form shows the videos were released by the book. Senator Reid, who helped initiate the ATIP program, has confirmed there's a lot more where these came from. You cannot just hide your head and say it doesn't. These things aren't happening. We have military installations where hundreds and hundreds of people who are there 
see these things. After the I-Team obtained the paperwork, we asked Elizondo if this is the form he filed with the Pentagon. He said he's not authorized to comment that it's up to the Department of Defense. It is known that the three videos and the pilots involved in those encounters were part of several closed-door briefings given to Congress over the past year. High-ranking Navy officials joined some of those briefings and reportedly were just as surprised as congressional staff. That ongoing effort is what led to last week's stunning announcement by naval officials. They now want to encourage pilots to report unusual encounters without fear of damaging their careers. The briefings for Congress underway for the past year or so were arranged by a man named Chris Mellon, who formerly worked for the Senate Intelligence Committee and also for the Department of Defense. Mellon, now with To The Stars Academy, sent a statement to us saying that after senior Navy officials joined the briefings, they realized it was, quote, indefensible to not have a system that allows more reporting of these incidents. We have his full statement and other supporting material on our website, and we want to thank Senator Reid for his help in obtaining documentation related to this report. More to come. Sense to hear the pilots uh, angle on it. They're the ones up there, right? Right. Yeah, this is a big deal. All right. Well, so this is the last clip that I wanted to show. It was um, a segment from one of the local news stations here in Greensboro that really only somewhat <laughs> relates to the rest of the stuff in this video, but uh, here it is, and then I'll talk about it afterwards, so check this out. There are about seven and a half billion people living on our planet. But are we alone? What about space? Is there extraterrestrial life somewhere out there? Back on the ground, a group in the triad looks to the skies for signs of life. They're tracking UFOs. WFMY News News Tahitia Moy spoke with them and a triad man who says he captured a UFO on video. Look up into the sky. Have you ever seen a UFO? They're spinning like... Okay, don't talk this video. Look at this thing. It's rotating. Volunteer organizations like the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, collect reports of sightings worldwide and investigates them. Like, here's a North Carolina case right here. David Glidewell is a MUFON state director for the North Carolina chapter. On top of analyzing photos and videos... So that's a drop of water. He also trains people to become field investigators. To be a good investigator, Glidewell says you have to be a skeptic, but also keep an open mind. You just can't dismiss everything. You know, dismissing it is just like, uh, that's probably the worst thing you can do. Many times UFO sightings turn out to be lens flares, airplanes, birds, bugs, or drones, which investigators are trained to spot. But there's about two to three percent of the cases a year that there actually is something that's really strange and that's you look for those golden nuggets. Daniel Patterson believes he saw a golden nugget in Liberty. He describes it as a spiritual experience. I was talking about the universe right before it happened. He walked us to the spot in the woods where he captured what he calls a UFO. When it traveled behind my head it would have been right here. On this Facebook live video something zooms past him. And I didn't know it was there. It was brought to my attention by someone else that saw it in the video and said, hey, Dan, did you see the UFO? I said, no. It's hard to see at first glance. Here it is in slow motion, and these are some screenshots to get a better look. This is just one of many reported UFO sightings in our state. The National UFO Reporting Center lists North Carolina as one of the top 10 states for reported sightings with close to 3,000 last year. It's just very unusual, you know, you can see videos of things that just boggle your mind. Naysayers are out there, of course, but Glidewell says he takes their perspective with a grain of salt. Learn to bite your tongue and smile and just go, okay, well, and the truth is, it's like, you know, uh, you have to respect that person's opinion. So who knows what it was, to be honest with you. MUFON investigators have yet to classify what the Liberty sighting is. And even if they don't come to the same conclusion, Patterson and Glidewell both agree on one thing. You know, maybe there is some sort of extraterrestrial life out there that will make contact with us one day. Who knows? At the end of the day, we all question whether there's something out there. 
Now, if you want to report a UFO sighting or take a look at past reports, it's very easy to do. I walk you through the process in this story on our website. There are some fascinating reads. I can promise you that not only can you report sightings, you can actually sign up to be a field investigator. <laughs> it's actually a pretty laborious process. You have to read material and take a test and go through a number of uh, uh, readings to see if you hmm. actually pass before you can even become a field investigator. Oh, so. Not like a weather spotter. No. You have to go sky. through the proper channel. So Tahesha, <laughs> when you were investigating and looking to the story, what was your thought going into it and after now that it's been done? Okay, to be honest with you, on a UFO, I was like, okay, no, you know what, I, I don't know about this, but after talking with them and kind of seeing the video for myself, I can't really explain to you what that was. And he told me, Daniel Patterson did, that this was his fourth time seeing a UFO. A number of other times he actually saw it in a group. Hmm. It's hard hmm. to discount something when eight or nine people see the exact same thing. So, But it's still being determined yeah. what is in that video. So we should have an update mm -hmm. from that organization sometime in the yeah, next few weeks. Hoping in the next few weeks to get that to you guys. So I wanted to show that to everyone just because, well, you know, I get really excited whenever I hear the stuff spoken about on the news. And I also wanted to illustrate the point that the media's philosophy about talking about this sort of thing is really changing a lot. Had this been 10 years ago, the last segment that I showed you would have never gotten any coverage because let's be frank, the footage that they were showing wasn't even that compelling. So minds are changing and excuse the annoying leaf blower in the background, sorry. One other thing I want to say. Um, yeah, and if I find the link to this video, I'll put it in the description, but I very recently watched a video by PBS Space Time, which is an awesome channel, awesome show, uh, especially if you're into any anything related to space and science, but this guy that hosts it, he is fairly skeptical about a lot of things, which I respect because he's respectful. But something interesting, very interesting that he was talking about in this one video, even as a skeptic, was how interstellar travel would be possible in the coming future, even for mankind. And this is vastly, vastly different from what scientists in the mainstream were saying even 10 years ago. And this is one of the reasons why so many scientists are so skeptical or want to dismiss the possibility that UFOs are from other planets. It's because they think that interstellar travel is impossible. Well, science is showing the more that we learn about it, we're seeing that this actually is a possibility, even for lowly mankind, not that technologically advanced mankind. So imagine if there are other races out there that are hundreds, thousands, million years more advanced than we are. Why on earth would anyone discount the possibility that a UFO could be from another planet? Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.